yeah. There we go. Yep. I've got it on my side. Yeah, oh, I'll cool. just do the, I'll just just so you know when I when I do it on my side, I just do the audio and then attach it to slides. Okay. Because I I get copyright notices from um, DreamWorks that I'm imitating Shrek when I'm on. <laughs> and you know, cease and desist is fine, but if you get them every week, it's really tedious. Yeah, where's yeah? Yeah. Yeah, exactly it's like i'm i'm it's not a costume it's it's just me <laughs> so you think i'm That's kidding funny. not that much no i've <laughs> had i seriously i've had not to be a dead horse here uh, or a dead camera but uh i've had professional photographers is so you know you've heard the saying with bands you know oh, they're better live oh yeah definitely. i am yep. better live for whatever reason uh, you know, people are talking a bit. Yeah, I've had photographers like shoot like hundreds of shots, and then like look at their camera like it's broken. They're going through the images. Going, <laughs> what the hell's That's wrong funny. with this thing? Is, do I need new batteries? What, what's happening? <laughs> but it was it was live when the pictures were being taken, though. I know, right? And so it from, should be fine. It, it should be, but eh, whatever. Anyway, so uh, how long did you guys want to go? Um, we, we can, you know, we were planning to go till 12 if we go a little bit sure, longer. Let's do it. Yeah, that's if we, if you want to go longer, that's fine too. Hey, yeah. um, uh, what's this called again? Lost Arts Radio. Lost Arts Radio. Okay. All right. Wait. Yeah. Yep. I got it. You were, you were you on were, with this about, what was it? 2017 or something? It was a long yeah, time ago. Just yeah. Really it's long. been a while. Six yep. years. <laughs> Has it been six years? Jeez. Yeah, that's crazy. That's Time is really weird here. You know, I, I could. Know. You know what? Let me look it up really fast. I could. I could tell you because I probably got it on my. Uh, it's only audio. On mine, or no, when we did it. When we, we did were it, only doing yeah. audio at that time. We weren't. Yeah. We weren't doing video yet. Let me. Uh, let me look up Lost Art to see if I can find it. Yeah, you'll see it. Lost. YouTube has a good search engine. Yeah. Yeah. Interview one oh two. <laughs> and yeah. this and this one would be uh today if i post it later it'll be three nine four. Oh, your numbers you mean nice yeah, my numbers this will be interview 394 which uh which is pretty good considering the amount of <laughs> ones that i lost because of either copyright issues or they wouldn't allow me to put them up or they just never sent them re re recording you know it was in another language and I couldn't even remember how to get a hold of them. Right. Uh -huh. All right. Nice, nice thing about YouTube is they don't consider flat earth controversial, so they won't censor it. Yeah. Yeah. They, they won't. Uh, they'll, they'll, there's there. Well, there used to be three things that are absolutely forbidden on YouTube as of a couple of years ago. Uh, one was medical misinformation. Wink, nudge, you know what that is? Yeah. Uh, that's telling the truth about health. Right. Uh, one is false flags. So if there is any sort of shooting, you can't immediately make a video saying it didn't happen that way. And here's why. And uh, right. Because you might expose what the government's actually doing. Right. And then the third one is you uh, up, but that was, this was rolled back like a month ago. Uh, you weren't allowed to talk about the 2020 election. They, and, they changed that. Yeah. That, that now has been changed. You can say anything you want. Well, because the 2024 uh, elections coming up and the primaries are in what five months. Yeah. So they, although they, I don't know if that's soon enough considering what they're trying to do to us. Right. That would butcher the, um, their algorithms. I mean, you know how many people are going to reference 2020 in the 2024 elections? So they're like, you know what, let's just turn it off. for now. <laughs> We're not even going to worry. So they're about going it. to allow it. Oh, it's that's already allowed. Okay. So you can you can you can now make a video saying 2020 was rigged and no one's going to care. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean it's been 3 years. So All right. Yeah, all of our all of our strikes have been for medical misinformation though. Yeah, That's all of mine were I didn't have yeah. in fact I even lost my official silver play button. Oh wow. Because uh you can't let the, that's in the fine print. Which I didn't is, know that. Yeah, if you hit your, you know, trip uh, six digits, you know, if you hit a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and that, you know, that's like, you know, you get a check mark, you get a silver play button sent to your house, and all that, and they say unless <laughs> you have a guideline strike at at one wow. point, and the first one's at considered a warning, and the warning stays on permanently. 
Right. Yep. Song. I hope you know this goes down on your permanent record. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's what happens. And so hmm. I had a, I had a, a a show listener actually make one for me. They, uh, they <laughs> that's good. Like, you still got it. it. <laughs> so, but yeah, they they will not send it to you. So anyone that you see with a check mark check next to their name and you know uh-huh. uh it, that is a that is a channel that has followed the rules to the letter yeah i guess yeah we're never trying got, to do never that, gotten yeah. a warning even i guess they're taking down our old videos from years ago sometimes four a day now wow yeah well, not too many strikes on the old stuff but we still have any given time we always have one and sometimes as many as two wow but, all right yeah so yeah. um when did you want to kick this thing off uh, pro- probably now would be good all right let's I, do it. Uh, i would play everything that we've said now as part of it but it might be risky because we talked about the uh the censoring policy and all that oh stuff. i'll probably no no you can talk about the censoring policy you just so, can't officially uh, so we could let we could let people in mm-hmm. on what we've said so far you could i mean i'm gonna put it on mine if you want to wait for uh you know but i i guarantee i won't get here no what do you think, Doug? You think it's safe? I would just start when we start. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. He wants to play, he wants to play it a little bit. No, well, I, don't, I mean, I don't, coming I don't... from a production standpoint, that's what I do. Yeah. So yeah. do you guys do a okay. musical intro or are you just going right. to do the intro? He's going to yeah, put we have, that We have a little piece of music and then Richard starts off and he'll introduce you and then yeah. we'll get going. Okay. So, okay. So, but the music ready? piece I'll add in later. We're ready? Cool. Yeah. Ready when you guys are. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Hey, everybody, welcome back. This is Richard Sachs on Lost Arts Radio. Glad you're with us today. And we have a treat for me. We've been looking for a few months for somebody to respond to listeners' questions and interest about the whole flat earth issue. And it's kind of a a reprieve for a minute out of the intense pressure of, uh, I think they call it real life, you know, where we look at what's actually happening in the world and what the agenda is against humanity that's running right now. And to take a short break from that, looking at the idea of whether the earth is round or flat, there was a time when everybody knew it was flat for sure. And in fact, if you disagreed with that, you might get punished like killed or something like that. And it was mostly coming from religious authorities. That's changed in case you haven't kept up. And now the earth is officially round. And there are people who are on both sides of the issue. And I've tried to get uh, flat earth proponents on the show before, and most of them have been very combative. And I wanted to have like a, a grown up type discussion about it where we're all as humans on the same side and just interested in whatever is true and totally open, which is my attitude toward pretty much everything. And I remembered that six years ago, which feels like just a few minutes right now, we had a great guest on named Mark Sargent, and I wondered if he might be willing to come on again um, and talk about this issue from a, a big perspective on both sides. And Doug, in the meantime, went on Facebook and got some questions from his friends there that we'll share with Mark if we have time. And uh, it should be a really great discussion. So welcome, Mark. And Thanks for giving us the time. I really appreciate it very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for inviting me. It has been a while. Uh, It was interview 102 for me for six years ago. And I'm sorry. I apologize in in advance for uh, all the people that you've run into that seem to be combative. Uh, the, the, The truth of community is a little twitchy. Uh, you know, they're, they're a little suspicious of anybody who's talking and asking questions, uh, but you don't necessarily have to worry too much with me. I, I don't know if I could be competitive if I tried. Uh, you know, I think people are kind of programmed to want to fight about whatever the issue is. Right. It, right. right. It doesn't and, and matter I, what the I, subject. I, I will say this, you know, I, I, you know, unless I get personal attacks, like I'll, I'll give you a quick example. There was a, a journalist in New Zealand who put me in the hot sun for like 40 minutes while he sat in the shade deliberately uh-huh. I, I knew what he was doing and he was working me just working me and he stopped and he goes he goes all right cut 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 he goes all right so i can't get you to snap you know why why aren't you getting mm-hmm. angry about what's happening here i'm, I'm swearing mm-hmm. at you i'm, I'm calling mm-hmm. your names i'm doing all this i'm going i'm going man 
I go, I go, this is flat earth. I go, that's, that's what we wake up with. I go, plus I was you five years ago. How can I get mad at you? How can I get, how can I get angry if, uh, you know, it'd be hypocritical. Did you get to ask him why he was doing that? Oh no, I didn't have to. I knew why he was doing that. It's, it's What's the reason? Oh, because they, they're looking for a sound bite that is off road. Yeah, but why, why? Because that's the sensationalism of it. Uh, the, all, okay. all mainstream journalists want you to forget that you're mic'd up. They'll put a hot mic on you early and then you'll, it's comfortable enough. You forget about it. And then they want, you know, so you'll be talking about whatever, you know, and you, you, they'll, you'll be talking, doing your normal speech and, and they want you to all of a sudden get comfortable enough to where they can ask you a question and hope, you know, they'll, they'll do probing questions, see if you'll make a statement that's, that's off color enough that, that, that they can use that as a lead. Right. You, whatever, political, religious uh you know some personal attack on somebody else you know the anything anything and then you know if i if i said all of a sudden you know uh you know yeah david weiss i really hate that guy right it's like mark Sargent hates david weiss you know that would be a, the, right. the lead thing it's not true but but again i get it you know you want you want a good lead you want a good a good a good hook so whatever. so the the deeper issue of what is actually true never occurs to them i guess nope Nope. They are there for their, every, every media outlet has their own narrative and above them, you have the greater narrative with which, you know, the media, you know, serves as puppets sometimes, mm -hmm. but for the most part, uh, you, you remember the old saying, if it bleeds, it leads. That really right. has never changed. Uh, you know, and, and by that, I mean, it doesn't have to be literally blood on the street that helps, uh, because everybody to this day still slows down and rubbernecks at a, at a car wreck. But, uh, you know, anything that's sensational that, I mean, come on, look at the, look at the, the submarine thing that happened last week. Right. Right. right? I mean, come on. It, it's like, they, they just, they, they linked it to Titanic, you know, this, this successful movie from 20 years ago mm -hmm. and, you know, they romanticized it. And, and what you, you know, what you didn't know was those people were dead, <laughs> And they were dead early and they made it seem like, oh, they only got 15 hours of air left. It's like <laughs> that that thing pancaked immediately. Everything right. about all oh, pounding on the hole and crap like that. No, that's not how it works. Pressure differential, you know, sub sub guys know this very well, which yeah. is when it happens, it's instantaneous. Yeah, exactly. It is absolutely not not like the movies. So but anyway, yeah, they milk it. Never. The mic you're holding looks kind of like a round earth. Is that intentional? Um, you... you know, no. I mean, I had a couple choices. Either I do a, like a stage mic, which looks uh -huh. a bit, looks a bit phallic, uh, or I do the. This is actually the best mic I actually ever found. Uh, I'm know, not it, complaining. I just thought it was interesting. Oh no, it's a well. I, the reason I have it black and it's black on black is it's 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 harder to see. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a spherical mic by uh, Blue. It's a it's a Blue Snowball mic. With this, with this ghetto puff piece what? on the front, it's with a single rubber band. Yeah, unusual so that, mic. So that I can so just so that people have some context to this whole thing, what what ever got you involved in an interest in the shape of the Earth, and where did that come? Where were you before that? Sure. Uh, before that, a, a brief history. I started out my career playing video games for a living okay. in uh, Boulder, for Colorado. Had had for a, a living. Choice. That means trying to get prizes for winning. Is that how you do that? Uh, no, no. This was back in the day. This wasn't tournament video game stuff like like all the kids are doing now. No, uh -huh. this is nine to five sitting in a in a desk playing games, uh, you know, and 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 reviewing games and and really working out the kinks of of your company's games, so okay. that you you know you I was the ringer in the company that could tell you if the game was worth a damn or not okay wow and, interesting yeah and so that and so i'd go to the conventions i go to like uh e3 and um uh mac world boston and mac world san fran and, and stuff like that and it was it was really fun um and then but i never got married or had kids so I, it, a lot of people can't relate to this but if that never happens you have an immense amount of free time on, on your hands huge right. huge right. amounts of free time and I and I was there when the internet was young, and so you know, I went down just about every rabbit hole that appeared, as it appeared, 
Mm -hmm. And I had an opinion on. And you assumed the earth was round at that time. Of course. Of course. Everybody everybody does. Even conspiracy people do. Right. right? Everybody in the truth community, every, which is why when I made the clues, that was my opening line. Everybody knows that the flat earth is the most ludicrous conspiracy ever out, you know, ever. Right. It's the worst one. The the last one you should ever even consider. But I had to consider it because I ran out of everything else. So it's like, well, I'm not getting any older. I think it was 46 at the time. And uh, it's like, all right, you know what? I'll start my bucket list early. Let's do this. And so I looked at it and I thought, huh. But and I got into it actually kind of by accident. Uh, I was looking at the hollow earth theory and the hollow earth was tied to a, a, a Navy guy named Richard Byrd, the, the youngest admiral in the history of the, the Navy. Yeah, let, let people know what the hollow earth theory is. Yeah, the, the hollow earth is that there are massive subterranean caverns that fill up most of the sphere inside of a globe that mm-hmm. civilizations can live in. And, right. and actually with a hollow earth there, you don't even need the, the whole earth to be freaking hollow. You just need right. caverns. Because remember, most of our civilization lives between sea level and one mile up. I mean, if you had a cavern that was right. even 50 miles high, that would handle it. would be personally. huge. Oh, yeah, it would be, yeah. be huge. It, it and Admiral Byrd in the, was it the 50s? Uh, went and discovered the entrance to what he said was hollow earth. Yeah. Yeah. The Admiral Byrd uh, was he, there was this little story about he, he was the first guy to, to fly for the Navy um, up to the North pole and supposedly right. found this entrance to a hollow earth, you know, journey to the center of the earth type thing. I'm going, Oh, mm-hmm. Hey, that's interesting. Well, I wonder where he spent the rest of his career. Like if that was it. I would just keep going up there, right? Flying up there and flying up there. Sure. That's not the the Navy immediately sent him to Antarctica to, right. to do more flying research because he flew his own planes and he flew yeah. around Antarctica, apparently looking for something. We don't know what for 30 mm-hmm. years up until his death, uh, right. up until uh, Operation Deep Freeze, 1955, 1956. And and he had some interesting reports about what he saw there too, right? Well, he initially had said that he he went on a a, a sixty minutes of a of of its day. It was called the uh, the Long Jeans Chronoscope Show, sponsored by an expensive watch company, and right. said that there's this massive. He he mm-hmm. thought it was fascinating. There was this massive chunk of land that he could see that was larger than the entire United States that Mm -hmm. no human had been on yet. And remember, he had already been down there for 25 years, 20, you know, pushing 30 years. Right. And uh, and I thought that was fascinating. Of course, there's Operation High Jump, which was right after World War II, which he headed up, which was supposedly uh, uh, just an exploration mission down there. But they took a full-blown armed carrier group and 5,000 infantry. And when they, when the, and the the rumor was that they were going to root out the last of the Nazi bases. Yeah. That part was speculation. Schwabia or something like that? Yeah. The original concept, though, was true, which was there was only one country in Antarctica during World War II, and that was the Nazis. And I just love the fact, you know, that art imitates life. It's like, look, Indiana Jones wasn't just a movie. The Germans were really big. Anything it it took to win the war, whatever it was. If If there was an artifact out there that could win the war, they're sending teams. And not just a few guys. And so, you know, it doesn't matter if it's if it's Frodo's ring or Harry Potter's wand or the Ark of the Covenant. They're looking for it. Exactly. And they were working on nuclear weapons, too. Right. Well, the famous Albert Einstein letter, yeah. which was the, the Einstein letter was said, look, if you don't make if you don't develop an atomic weapons program. And I know that I've got truth or community is like they're, they're not big on the atomic weapons concept or like whatever. Doesn't matter. I love the story, which is, but Einstein's letter was absolutely true. Which he says, if you don't do this, the Germans mm-hmm. will, and yeah. they will not hesitate to use them. They will. They will. They, it'll be their bread and butter because right. it's that's pennies on the dollar. Whatever type of explosive you don't believe in fission weapons, that's fine. Whatever type of, of super explosive they had, they would have used that because yeah, you want to level a city to send a message. Sure, that's one bomb. You know, that you would make it. Just as a side note, that would make another really interesting discussion about nuclear weapons because it seems to all i looked i had somebody mention that to me and it seems to be based on the work of this guy uh what's his name do you remember who i'm talking about uh not oppenheimer no no i mean the original theory well i mean i don't know who where the original theory came from i don't even know if einstein 
uh, was part of the original formula. But I like the concept, which is it's really ham fisted. And the concept is the bonds that hold our molecules together are like a very, very tight rubber band, uh -huh. extremely tight and extremely strong. And if you can break one of them, it releases a massive amount of energy. And if you can find a way to start a chain reaction to break a whole bunch of them, I mean, it's uncontrollable if, if you can pull this off. Yeah, it's yeah. it's the biggest weapon. You know, it's only limited by the amount of fissionable material you can you can grab. And so you you mm -hmm. have to take the most unstable bonds you can find, which is uranium, and then refine them to to a, a different level of uranium and then mm -hmm. crush them. Which again, I love the concept. Which is you you take it a you you take a piece of uranium and you surround it with an explosive and you force it in on itself, right? You crush it, and in mm. the uh, the the crushing process, that's where you, you get the explosion. Anyway, long story short, the the Nazis uh, would have used it, and so they uh, you know the Americans went through with their program with with some enthusiasm, I might add. Um, yeah. If you want to know, you know, what the Germans, there was um, a wonderful alternate history television program, which ran for a number of years called The Man in the High Castle, which is uh, which was if the Germans won the war and had to share part of America with Japan, what have, what would that have been like? And very, very interesting, you know, even down to the fact that a lot of people don't know that we can run supersonic passenger jets. You know, the Concorde was a thing. And. Uh, the only reason we didn't was because the sonic boom upset some people, you know, but the Germans, it's like, no, we don't care. It's like, it's the fastest way to get there. Everyone runs Concords. That's all any right. plane they're ever going to be. Well, according to Mein Kampf, uh, Hitler wanted to clear out the rest of the world for the Germans anyway. Right? Sure. Eliminate everybody else. Anyway, so that's that's how I got into it, uh, you know, back in back in 2015, you know, I started in 2014 looking into it in 2015. I, I gave up. I couldn't figure out how the globe actually was working. There were way more hole, holes in the plot of the globe model than there were the flat model. And so I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues, and I put them on the Internet with all my contact information, because that's a fantastic idea. That's exactly what you want to do. Right. And I mean, my phone number, my address, the, the whole nine yards and people start calling me and subject matter experts from the military that was on you on YouTube. Right. Yep. Yep. On YouTube. And, and still, it's, And it's still there. Still there. Still there to this day. Ne those were never taken down. Uh, they're eight years old now. And uh, people start calling me from all walks of life. Uh, you know, ev everybody that had to do anything with travel contacted me and said, yeah, dude, it's not that crazy. Here's why. And they would keep adding to it to where by the end of 2015 we had a pretty solid base to work with as far as far as uh, a foundation of, of theory and then 2016 the media got a hold of it and it just took off from there and and since mm -hmm. then you know I've, I've done a couple of books on amazon there was a netflix documentary that happened called behind the curve in uh, 2017 which was a what I consider to be a fair snapshot of the community. And it did very well on Netflix, ran the full three-year contract. Amazon picked it up. iTunes picked it up. Uh, it was, that was something. And then we did conferences. As, uh, all the way up until, in fact, in 2019, we could do no wrong. We had done conferences in, I think, in seven countries at that point. And mm -hmm. uh, then the pandemic happened. And then everything just shut down because we couldn't we couldn't cross borders because, you know, our right, community right. wasn't going to take the shot or wear masks and no venue would even let you wear masks. In fact, we had to go to the last three years. We did an East Coast conference uh, at a Shriners convention hall, you know, run by the Masons. Mm -hmm. And and we did actually a lot of people showed up at those. And, and the attitude is like, eh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Sure. <laughs> Why not? If the Masons are, are willing to let us in without masks, oh, more power to them. Right, exactly. So, whether or not they know the shape of the earth. Right, right. You know, the, it, but it was it was nice to see. You know, nobody in you know we did full blown conferences, and it was just you know this this Masonic Hall. It wasn't all of them, but this Masonic Hall type place in uh, North Carolina, and none of the employees wore masks, and and they were like, wow. yeah, screw this, screw this mandate how, stuff. How nice. Yeah. It was good. So why don't we talk about the basic? Well, you know, where we left off before I diverted the conversation was uh, in the exploration of Antarctica. Yeah. 
So how do you get from that? First of all, Antarctica doesn't exist according to flat earth people, right? Not like you know it. So, so what was he exploring? Okay, so Admiral Byrd, again, they, what I found very, very interesting, you know, there was a lot of mystery that was, was thrown into this, was Admiral Byrd was flying around Antarctica for the second half of his, career, of his career. That's all he did was fly, looking for something. You could tell he was looking for something for 30 years, something that was related to what was at the North Pole. And what I think happened was when they got to the North, whatever they found at the North Pole was so, you know, matched up some of the old, the old maps which didn't make any sense and so when they were at the north pole it's like okay if if you know what's happening at the north you got to find the outer marker meaning that the coastline of antarctica that's just the beginning but that means that antarctica is much much larger than we're told uh and by the maps as a matter of fact you want a, a great example of it the flat earth map is the un flag right which, which i find fascinating because there's only one continent not on the un flag has the UN ever commented on why that is? Nope. <laughs> no, they, mm -hmm. well, I, that would be the first immediate question, right? Yeah. Why didn't I'll you call up the UN and say, yeah, excuse me, but your your map is missing a continent. Yeah, a whole continent. And, and, and you can't say, well, it's because nobody owns Antarctica, technically, which is true, which is absolutely mind blowing to me. I mean, every square inch of real estate right in this world is owned by somebody except for you know the whole continent of antarctica it's like have you ever thought about calling up a u.n spokesperson and asking him about it uh i suppose we could but i you know whoever, you wouldn't get anything back no i mean whoever you're talking to they're not going to know anything and because, besides yeah. the the flag was what created back in 1947 so right i i don't think nobody's gonna I, have any idea yeah, i don't think they're gonna be able to help but what they did was in operation after Operation uh, Deep Freeze, 1955, 1956, here's my speculation for you. Uh -huh. And I don't I don't consider it reckless. Admiral Byrd found either a, a guide stone or something to that effect that sh that showed the, the outer marker. You know, he's flying in, in, what, by an outer marker. What do you mean? Meaning the barrier being this. Everything's finite, right? Everything the begin has a beginning, has an end. Uh, every lake has a shoreline, but eventually you, you run into something else. So if this world is a snow globe, eventually you're going to run into the glass, right? The, the wall. And he, if you fly inward long enough, eventually my theory is you're going to see it. Okay. And at that point, Antarctica basically shut down. It became a no-go place very, very quickly. So at one point in 1954, you know, he does the long genes chronoscope and he's, he's talking about how people are going to be in Antarctica for 100 years. There's all sorts of resources down there. There's coal, there's remember, minerals, yeah. there, there's uranium, there's oil. Yeah. And then he turns around and then they turn around just a few years later and immediately start drafting up the Antarctic Treaty. And the Antarctic Treaty, for those of you who don't know, and you can look it up, there's PDFs of it all over the internet. It's not a secret mm -hmm. treaty. The only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties says that no corporation can set up shop there ever, period. And did they say why? No. Wouldn't that no. be the first, the first question everyone would ask? Is well, why, I mean, why do you want to do that? You could throw it under the guise of environmental concerns, <clears throat> which I addressed in the clues. And I said, environmentalism wasn't even a word in 1959 i mean come on you had 30 cent gas and double cheeseburgers for breakfast i mean nobody right and, and why would the environment in antarctica be any more important than the environment anywhere else right and greenpeace wasn't even founded until the 70s right and, right, and it right. certainly wasn't wasn't didn't have deep enough pockets to go to antarctica at the time nobody right. cared and what was even worse was they said, okay, we're locking this thing down and it's not even up for review until 2041. Now you're saying, well, you know, that's only less than 20 years away for us now. But yeah, but back then that was 80 years away. Mm -hmm. like you, you made a treaty and no revisions for 80 years. How? You know, there's oil and gas. And I knew exactly what they were thinking, which was, uh, it was a, that was my big flag, which was this world is, is run off money and greed and power. Right. You know, if you want to start fracking in your, your, you know, your neighbor's backyard, we'll make that happen here. Well, I think, you you know, to be fair, you really need to give adequate credit to Satanism, too, which is not about money. 
Sure. But that's another just part of the discussion. Sure. I mean, there, there could be some ritual involved. No, no question. But what, yeah, in this case, what's bigger than money? And I knew exactly what they were thinking, which was, okay, let's say you have uh, British Petroleum or Exxon or Mobil or one of the big, the big guys down there. Yeah. And yeah. you have helicopters flying in certain directions and planes, you know, because they're going to be looking for stuff constantly. Right. Well, one of those planes goes off course. What are you going to do? You, you got to tie up that loose end. And then you have to tie up another loose end. And eventually somebody, you know, in one of those big Illuminati board meetings, it's a short one, short meeting, which is uh, like, it's like, yeah, you know what? It's not even worth it. Just, just shut it down. Just okay. Lock- so what was being explored down there? If Antarctica is not there. Oh, you mean what, what were they looking for or what? Uh, no. How, how did he have the uh, area to fly around for so long? Oh, Fantastic. well, that's just it. Why, how can you fly around 30 years around a place that's not big enough to fly around for 30 years? You know what so I mean? So what was he doing? Was it all just made up? No, 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 no. I think he. I think the, the continent, if so, for, for those of you who don't know, what we're talking about here is the, the world is basically a dinner plate, a snow globe, a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling. But the outer edge and all the continents look pretty much the same. You have the North Pole in the center. All the continents kind of splayed out around it, but the only continent that doesn't look like it should is Antarctica. Which, by this the way, is, this is the flat Earth model that you're yeah, describing. yeah, the the, the, right. the flat Earth model. The so, UN flag. Uh, in fact, hang on, I've got a uh, real quick. Hopefully, you can see this. So we'll just use this so I don't have to throw anything up screen. Yeah. Oh, so, there, there you go. You can kind of see that on screen. So there you go. There, there's yeah. the, the flatter dome model. You have the, the center is the North Pole. All the continents are splayed pretty much organically uh, around it, except for Antarctica. So Antarctica is not a snowy Australian like continent at the bottom of a globe. It is stretched around the outside and the mass has got to be freaking huge. The only difference between this map and probably what the real thing is just for scale size is the white edge on this map. Uh, where it should be Antarctica is probably much, much thicker, which is why it took so long. So that was where he was flying around. Yeah, you're flying, you're flying around a giant snowy place. And you've tried, you're again, you're trying to figure out where it is. And I think at one point they, they almost gave up, you know, after 30 years, if the United States Navy hasn't found it and the Soviets are down there and, and uh, all sorts of other groups. How, how wide do you think the ice ring is? To the outer marker? Oh, I don't know. To the edge, yeah. Two or 3,000 miles, at least. That, okay. that's, that's being conservative. Yeah, see, that's really different than a lot of the flat Earth models that I've seen and heard about, which make it like a line. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that, again, that's just for the model's sake. You know, you don't want to make the model too wide. I've got, I used to have some where the, uh, the, the white part was much, much bigger. Much, much bigger. Right. Uh, and so I, th- anyway- I think it's important because that, that means that that exploration that was going on with Admiral Byrd, there was a place for him to fly around. Sure. If, if it was just a line, he couldn't do it. Yeah. 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 If it was a line there, there wouldn't be that. That's a good point. Not a lot of people bring that up, which was it, the, the mass was so huge. You remember we're, we're talking about the, one of the best explorers that ever lived. He knew what he was doing. He flew his own planes and he was very regimented military guy. And he was just, you know, probably doing spread patterns, you know, going out, going back, setting up refueling stations on flat areas. Wouldn't he have had a compass with him? Oh, that's a great point. You know, However, I mean, in the globe model, the compass points to a point on the south end of the globe. But it normally and as you it, on the flat earth model, if you fly toward the ring, the compass would go crazy, right? Yeah. The in fact, you can you can ask, you can look up the stuff like this. It's one of those school questions. You know, school kids talk to scientists in Antarctica because those are the only guys that are down there are scientists and military scientists. Uh-huh. Uh, which is um, there is no magnetic south, and I've had all sorts of people uh, from the southern hemisphere tell me that uh, mil- military guys, and they said, but but the the kids that are the 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 guys that are talking to the kid the school kids they're saying the same thing. Yeah, the compass really doesn't work down here. So what they did was smart. They set up a geographical South Pole marker, you know, uh, like a silver orb thing stuck in the snow. And if you uh-huh. want to f- spend the fifteen thousand dollars to go down there, they'll take you to it. But if you set up your compass there, it's not going to do anything. 
And, and they'll just explain that as an anomaly. Of yeah, the it's just an anomaly. Location. People, people don't remember their basic school stuff, which is, look, with a bar magnet, there's a north and a south, right? right. On a bar magnet. You and know, a compass should work fine pointing to a certain point. Right. A compass is, so what happens is, this is how it works. This is the genius of the engineering of this place, is that you have a very, very strong magnetic north. Uh -huh. And then you don't have a magnetic south. So the compass works just fine. If you're out there in the woods, I mean, compasses have worked for millions of people for a long, long so time. So what kind of a magnet has only one pole? Well, in this case, this one, I don't know. I don't know how it's done. I don't know how it's done. But if you have a strong magnetic force in the north, the compass will uh -huh. work. But when you go, the further you go south, it doesn't really change. It just gets weaker and weaker to the, where, the point where you get to the South Pole and it you know, kind of wobbles a little. So no matter where on the ring you are, it points north toward the North Pole. Yes. But from what I understand, when you're in Antarctica, it's so weak that up from time to time, the compass will just, just be lost. Just it get loose. It, right. it won't do anything, which is why when they introduced GPS, the United States military in the 1990s, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that was brilliant. And by the way, the GPS system is just... The Loran system, which was after World War II, uh, that was a land-based system. It's just the, the land-based system with a new wrapper. The 32 orbiting, supposedly uh, global satellites that make up the GPS system, have, which should be overlapping, right? There should uh -huh. be total blanket coverage, have a massive gaps everywhere in the oceans, which I talked about in the, in the thing. So mm. where when you get offshore, like if you're flying from, especially in the Southern Hemisphere, because there's so much more water down there or out there from the, you're going from South America to Africa, Australia. Once you get offshore and you're about 150, 200 miles away from a land radar and there's no islands in front of you, uh -huh. your GPS drops off. Meaning you're still in the scope, but they can't tell you where you are exactly. They can't tell you latitude and longitude. Wow, you, go into a, you go into approximated mode and you just stay on that heading until you get into land and then another thing picks you up and then you're back in it. And then I, I had a guy immediately contact me uh, about that. He goes, do it. It's not just the Southern Hemisphere. It's the Northern Hemisphere. When a plane leaves from leaves California and it heads off to Hawaii, you know, there's no islands between here and Hawaii. Right. Same, same thing happens. You go into approximated mode. And he goes, that's how planes get lost. If you get, if your plane goes down when you're in the approximated mode, <laughs> that's exactly, it's literal. It's like, yeah, we're not going to get found. Nope. We know approximately. That's why when that Malaysia flight went down, you know, the, and the black boxes, you know, in the Indian ocean, uh -huh. that, was, that was a flagship. And that was a triple seven. That thing's got so many redundant systems. It's like, you're telling right. me a triple right. seven went down and they couldn't find it, but whatever. Yeah. So, one yeah. one more question back to uh, the exploration of the South Pole. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you said they take you to a station. Yeah. You said there there's all kinds of people, military working down there, right? Scientists, right. people like that, and they have a South Pole station. Yes, and, and that explains what an answer, possible answer to one of my questions, which was, uh, we just had a really sincere seeming to me whistleblower talking about the nefarious activities at the South Pole, which I think are, are probably going on because they fit right in with the government trying to weaponize everything. Yeah. The only thing that, that you know, wouldn't fit would be the location of where he was working because he gave pictures of the South Pole station. Right. And, and that could be just placed anywhere within that 3,000 mile wide band. Oh, yeah. That you're defining as Antarctica. And so he he may be very sincere that he worked at the South Pole Station. Um, it wasn't to expose round Earth. It was it was to expose the weaponized programs that they're doing there to create earthquakes and yeah things like I, that. I watched some of his stuff and it's like eh, you know it's, who I'm talking about. Yeah, I do, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But yeah, he um he just I'm sorry I I don't I don't like to speak ill necessarily of people uh, unless they deserve it. But, but well, if you it, think if you think he was intentionally lying, I mean, it's reasonable. To I, say don't, that. I don't know if he was intentionally lying, but he just came. Look, I've talked to a lot of truthers over the years and he just didn't come off as a guy that really that the conviction really wasn't there. He was going okay. through the motions. He was saying the right things, but he I was I, reading a script. Yeah. Yeah. But I just didn't get that 
feeling that you know that there's usually a heartfelt note when, okay when you're when you're talking to guys like that yeah i mean hell i, I, even, I know what I you mean give, i even give bob lazar more credit than i gave him but but the only point i was making was that there's a south pole station yeah. and there are people working there and that's true yes it's I, just the location of where it is yeah there's about is different the the unclassified stuff that's down there there's about five thousand people at on an antarctica at a given time uh, mm -hmm. from McMurdo to, you know, different little outposts, there was this great little story. And I don't know if I still have the video on my channel, uh, but they don't do it anymore. You know, when the Fitbit first came out, right? The, the thing fit Fitbit's tied. It has a tracking device, obviously, because they want to let you know, it's like, Oh, look, here's where you ride, rode your bike around the neighborhood. Right. Right. Which, which right, was right. a slight, was there's a subtle way of tracking you. And what yeah. they didn't realize was there were military people wearing these. And when people started and you can look and not and, you know, you don't, they don't you don't know their names, but you can look. It's like, oh, look, here's neighbors who walked around, you know, my area. Oh, right. look, there's some people in a military facility. Oh, look, there's some people at a military base that's not on a map. <laughs> and then there's more military people at a military base in Antarctica right. that seem to be, you know, because even if you're driving with your Jeep or whatever it is, you know, it's still if your Fitbit was on, it was tracking you. Now, of course, yeah. it's been it's been blocked but it was it was pretty damn interesting right so antarctica is a huge continent according to flat earth yep yep super super big and again part of the design of this place it has many ne a negative reinforcement qualities that just scream go away it's nobody wants to visit there uh you know you have to spend a lot of money to go there and there's not a lot to do there when you get there right so why would you go and how 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 long is it to to go the whole circle oh wow you mean to, to do like the whole coastline of antarctica yeah. well that's that's one of the big mysteries which is there the, the old there's an old story i think it was a captain cook story that uh he tried to 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 map the the coastline of it and he got to i think about like again if you believe this story about sixty thousand miles which is fascinating because it should nothing's that that big around and it took a very very long time and who knows maybe mm -hmm. he was just doing it just to do it modern day even if you look at some of the races like there's some sailboat race down there that uh, supposedly tries to go around but when you look at the map exactly in their routes they just go to a certain point and seem to turn around and come back huh. which was which was odd. interesting so i i don't really know because none of our crew have really been down there so this really throws off the distances between many, virtually any point yeah. on on the globe potentially because, because if it's a plane then um the distances would all be calculated completely different and the farther south that you get the bigger the error but right? how, so. which is which is great because if you are let's say running controlling the gps system you know in the united states oh. military yeah. then you can it's there's no there's no problem it yes it helps you drive from here to your cousin's house but it can also map whatever distance especially over water uh which is why planes and pilots don't notice uh when they're when they're flying uh certain distances they um uh there's some fantastic videos on this where with you know any here's a here's a great example uh any flights from africa to south america to australia should uh -huh. never ever go north right but routinely they take these huge arcing paths north all over the equator and then come back down but if you take that same flight path and overlay it onto a flat map it either becomes a shallow dog leg or it's a straight shot and it's that's fascinating and there's again there's uh, a i know we have you confirmed this with airline people <clears throat> yeah 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 all, all all the time in fact there's a there's a wonderful the thing that really gives them way there's a book out there that was made by one of our people called 16 emergency flights on flat earth. And that's the giveaway, which is when, when normal flight pass, they'll just say, Oh, it's because of this or this, but when it's an emergency, like somebody has a baby or somebody has a uh -huh. stroke or whatever, you've got to get right. that plane to the nearest airport. Right. Yeah. And their nearest airport that they pick from a globe standpoint, doesn't make any sense. I'll give you, I'll just give you one example and, and you know, for time, time sake, sure, which sure. was, uh, there was a lady who was having a baby. She was flying, I think from the Philippines to Los Angeles. Right. And it was dead reckoning to Hawaii. And it's like, oh yeah, well, you're going to stop in Honolulu, obviously, you know, or one right. of the airports in, in Hawaii, right. but no, right. this thing jackknifed 
and went to Anchorage. Anchorage. And Anchorage. Yeah. And on a and on a globe, that makes no sense. I mean, on come a globe, on, the that's ridiculous. Least, yeah. Yeah. It's like how many hospitals do you think there are in Anchorage compared? I mean, we still pay people to live in Alaska. But if you overlay it on a flat map, it's like, no, no, no. It's going right by Alaska. It was almost there. It, just, <laughs> it made a shallow left and, wow. and got in there. And that happens all the time, all the time. Whenever there's an emergency, that's what the the big the dead giveaway. Wow. That was when pilots came to me um, almost immediately, which is why I made a clue about it. Uh, and it's the long haul flights, the really, so these, really long flights. That's the giveaway. Are, are these pilots typically believing in flat earth? They, they are, are they, now. Are they just confused? No, no, no. The, the, most of them, most of them, kind of know what's going on, but but a lot of them just couldn't see the forest for the trees. They know there's something wrong with the navigation, and when they look out the window, they know yeah. it looks flat. But at the same time, because pilots are certified, you know, you have to get licensed to be right. a, a commercial pilot. You, you're gonna, you can't, you can't come out. Uh, they've seen what happens. I mean, come on. Uh, if a pilot even says that he was chased by a UFO for 30 minutes you know publicly if you if right. you go to the press you're a pilot commercial pilot it's happened and says oh yeah by the way it was a ufo it was really really big and weird yeah, you're that's, benched that's it you're yeah, done that's right you're done you're not well, fired but you're not flying anymore. according to flat earth people there are no such thing as ufos right what flat earth yeah no no no. i believe in you because how could there be i mean oh oh okay no okay let me let me clarify um do I think there's things flying around in the sky that aren't us? Yes, I can see them. B grab a pair of night vision binoculars, five power or higher, and just start watching the sky. Let your eyes adjust. You'll see them. There's places crawling with them. Do I right. think they're from Mars or Venus and Jupiter? Nope. Nope. Well, but now, if I understand, Flat Earth doesn't believe there are other planets. No, no. Everything in the sky is, and I, I, you're probably old enough to remember a planetarium or when the last time you were at one. Sure, sure. Uh, everything is, is nothing but lights in the sky. The Everything up there is just a giant ornamental clock system that predates language. That's all it is. For, That's all for it does. For people that haven't seen a snow globe, explain what that is. Because we used to buy them in the airport a long time ago. Well, come on, everybody's seen this. They still sell them. Okay, so a snow globe is, well, which is why there's different versions of, of this, um, a shallow right. sports stadium, a pizza box. So a snow globe is, is, is well, you know, it's like a cake plate. So you, you see, a, see a plate, you know, with a cake on it, and then you just, uh -huh. put, you know, that domed lid over the top. Uh, right. That's, that's all. Like we're plexiglass or something. Um, yeah, yeah. But it, in this case, it would probably be a, a, a 1 million K rear projection system uh that you know whatever's up there is very very good as far as you know is can, like a great example you know even the best planetariums now here's the example i give to people you okay. you go in there it's like oh yeah there's the moon it looks mm -hmm. spherical uh-huh can you land on it no why not well because it's just light on the ceiling however it's a projection it, it's just a projection but if you took for example if you blindfolded like an amish person who's never like a pure Amish person who's never been to town, right? If, right. You, if you took him to a planetarium and you, you took off the blindfold, it'd blow his mind. He wouldn't even he'd be like, what? The, you know, same thing when people, you, if you remember when the, the first HD televisions came out, right? yeah. people are like just standing dumb faced in the store going, this is amazing. This is freaking amazing. These are people that grew up with television. So imagine, imagine what you could do with. So really if you want to tie together the ideas of the the solid uh, dome over the flat part of the Earth yeah. with the flat part, when when was it first discovered that Antarctica was a ring instead of a continent on the south? Oh, pole? it would have been about 1960. So uh, is that it, connected to Admiral Byrd? Do you think? Yes. Yeah, because Admiral Byrd, it would have been Operation Deep Freeze, 55-56 was his last big mission. And that's when he figured it out. And immediately afterwards, they started working on the, the treaty and then it was ratified in 1951. Right. So and before that, the authorities did not know. No, no. Which, which again, it, how could you? Unless you had the tech, and I, I've said this many times, which is, Let's say you have the old maps, right? Let's say you're part of the Illuminati and you have the old maps sitting in front right, of you. It's like, right. oh, wow, it's really, really great. But let's say you know this and it's uh, the 1700s. What do you got? Mm -hmm. you, you got wooden ships and you got horses. You're not going to be able to do much with that until right. you have an internal, a decent internal combustion engine program. 
uh, that you've got to be able to cross the ring. Yep. You've got to be able to fly without crashing on a regular basis. And then pressurized oh. aircraft really, really helped. And right. so when you figure it out, and that's what they were doing. I mean, it was just better and better aircraft from 1927, 28 until, until he died in 1957. Um, and then when you find out in 1960, well, what, what do you do? Do you tell people? You can't tell people. I mean, information is power. And honestly, I wouldn't have told anybody either back then. Because remember, oh, Ros Roswell was just 13 years earlier. When that, Admiral Byrd found the edge, yeah, that was the whole event, right? That was that, that was the big event where you know the, that's when everything changed because at that point, up until that point, you were, I mean, some again, some people I'm sure were were convinced it's like, yeah, it, this the map's not true, it's it's no way. And then all of a sudden he comes back and it's like, yeah, so did he talk about what the edge looked like? No. No, and even if he so did, it would, it, would be, it would be extremely classified. Look, if I was in the military back then, I would have debriefed him and I would have been really, really careful. And I, they had a problem with Admiral Byrd because he had been on television at that point for exactly, uh, and he had done interviews and he enjoyed interviews and he let it slip. The, the, the long jeans chronoscope interview, he let it slip the, not the, not the edge necessarily. But there was this one line where like he just casually threw it out it's like yeah we found oil and uh and uranium and all of a sudden he stops he goes yeah i probably shouldn't have said that it's like dude well if they did they never exploit the resource mineral resources no. on on the ring itself no can't how could you i mean i'm sure they they did from a very very small scale you know enough that they, they could use it down there but too, that's too just much it. danger of finding the edge if they did that. Well, not even that. You just can't let public companies go down there. You can't. You can't have anything unmonitored. That was their big, big worry. I mean, military. You know what's happening. You can control the 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 flow of information. You so said, there are no reports of what the edge looks like. Nope. Nope. Do you have a guess? Oh yeah, I got a guess. What do you it, think it looks like? I I guess it is a solid structure uh the, what it's made out of boy again you could it gets dealer's choice there i mean is it a heavy element is it a heavy water is it an electromagnetic field is it a unified field whatever it is what i if it was me if i was building it mm -hmm. i would introduce um something which we do in simulations called negative physics to where uh you wouldn't just crash into it it would uh you you basically whatever you you're going at it, you know you, you start slowing down and slowing down to where your engines are running but you're not moving forward anymore some kind of an energy field that yeah, something helps. something to keep you away which all well, doesn't kill you instantly that kind of deters you uh, but it's far enough right. inland to where once you get in there again once you see it it's you you have a tall tall order coming back because you're going to have to go you know go back the same way you right. came and so basically the idea is that this is the ultimate high-tech planetarium yes that's with that's, the, yeah. the dome is the screen yep yeah, that's that's basically it and we figured it out in 1960 and we decided not to tell the public for a number of reasons uh the the biggest being that it would undermine the ultimate authority of government why is, why would it do that well you can't there's an old air force saying when it comes to ufos it's like you can't rule the skies if you don't rule the skies meaning you can't admit that there's ufos necessarily publicly because ufos can run circles around you all day long because right. they, they they run on unified field engines now now that's changing because there's been a plan since 1950 yeah. something if. right for a fake alien invasion yeah and i know and i'm wait i'm waiting for it too but i'm not going to hold i mean i don't know that they'll do it but they they want it it'd be nice hey i'd love to wake up one day and and see that on every channel um but but you can't all you can't immediately say it's like we're the government we are we know what's going on and we are the authority that controls things and then all of us say oh yeah by the way this giant structure that we're in yeah we had nothing to do with that that immediately takes well they have nothing to do with the ground earth either no but at the same time they say it wasn't created they say it was an accident that's a that's a big big thing here uh which is 
you are what flat earth does by the way is, is it doesn't unify the religions but it gives them all leverage against science simultaneously and by that the big five um, hinduism buddhism judaism islam and christianity because if it is you know i'm going to hold up this model again really quick for you mm -hmm. if it is this uh -huh. then in no way can you say is this organic you know what i mean this doesn't happen accidentally and if it well was, actually though nothing does so I, you, I hear you, can't, you. You can't really say that about anything. I, I hear you. But from a pure science, you know, I'm, I'm being devil's advocate here from the science because yeah, yeah. I've talked to enough scientists from the science standpoint. They can say, well, a sphere can be formed organically through all the stuff that we've talked about the Big Bang. But however, you introduce this thing, you know, the, 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 the snow globe model and they're stuck. They're like, OK, so you, because structure is deliberate. And, you know, you know, mechanical like it structure. looks like some higher person built it. Yes. And, you know, if it was created now, I'm, again, I'm not going to name name gods here. Uh, but at the same time, whoever whoever built this place is a lot closer to knowing God's phone number than we are. And that that mess again, that means they are more they are bigger than our biggest power, which is the government. And you, you don't deliberately do that. You don't deliberately weaken your your position. And so they don't. They are. They're like, nope. So I, most I, of the flat Earth people would say that the flat Earth model makes it more obvious that there's a higher power. Yes. In fact, half of our uh, members, at least in the United States, I can't speak for other countries or other religions, but half of them are um, uh, evangelical Christian in one form or another. Uh, in fact, there have been flat Earth before the pandemic. There were flat Earth Christian conferences that I wasn't even invited to. Because well, that, I, that I, means that means they have to coordinate that with the Bible, right? Yes. And there's a wonderful website out there. One of the early guys that got into it, uh, his name was Rob Skiba, and he made a website called testingtheglobe.com. And he called me up after getting into this and, and he goes, he goes, look, I've gone through it with a fine tooth comb. It's he goes chapter and verse. It's a flat earth book. Uh, the only there's only one verse in there that even remotely talks about a circle, and that's Isaiah 40, 22, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. He goes to the ancient Hebrew, uh, globe and sphere and ball and circle are all completely different words. So mm -hmm. he could be saying, oh, yeah, I sit upon the dinner plate of the of the earth. Yeah. But yet pastors uh, will hang their hang their reputation on it because they don't they do not want to tell the congregation. Oh, yeah, by the way, we're going back to the flat map. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like if people were honest, they just say, we want to know whatever is true. Right. You'd think so. Yeah. But people like the yeah, they also like so their simple. comfort zones. They they like their their I routines. I, I, I understand. No, I've watched pastors. It's based on fear. It is. You know, if we can't answer all the questions, then maybe there's chaos and we don't have any meaning. Yeah. But I kind of, that's that's human nature. Uh, there's an old philosophical question, which is what what is a human being's most default common default state? Is it laziness or is it fear? That's a tough one <laughs> because they're really interconnected. You yeah. want to be lazy and you're afraid you can't be. So you were talking about the the whistleblower from Antarctica and, and questioning yeah. the sincerity, which I can't answer, of course. I don't know. Yeah. He does. Yeah. But what about the work of Stephen Greer? Uh, he's been at that for 33 years and he's see I've met him twice and he seems very sincere to me. I, I think he's still forget, started. forgive me. Stephen Greer. It was, was that, was that Dr. Greer? Stephen Greer? He's a, an emergency room doctor. He was had, the, that was the UFO disclosure stuff, right? Uh, yeah, not the corporate stuff, but the, the private one generated from his organization. That's all volunteers. Right. Right, right. I, I, and it's, his his work started when he had a near death experience and also an encounter with ET beings. Sure. And and he's found that the ET beings are real, and that they have absolutely no malice, and they're totally peaceful. Hmm. And he he's coordinated hundreds and hundreds of uh, stories from military who didn't know each other that cross corroborated their information that. Uh, they went to crash site, crash sites yeah. where weaponry had been used to shoot down ET vehicles, yeah. and they pulled bodies out 
and they reverse engineered technology from the craft. Right. And this is like verified hundreds of times yeah. under penalty of death because they had signed non-disclosure agreements that they right. would never talk about it. Right. And Stephen Greer convinced them that if the operation was illegal, they couldn't be held in the non-disclosure. Hmm. Well, that's, you know, the, the old saying, uh, all's fair in love and war. Well, if your country is in constant state of war in one form or another, uh, you know, the government can, can, can do what it wants. And, and they, they are doing whatever they want. Yeah. To. Yeah. The, the, what's that? There was a wonderful movie quote. It's like, look, they can, they could lock you in a room and throw away the room if they want. Yeah, that's right. And uh, they but, are. But I like, but I like his stuff. Uh, do I, again, do I believe in ETs and other civilizations? Yeah, I do. But I, again, I don't think they're from other worlds. And I know other people talk about the federations and the galactic this and that, but I think it's extra dimensional. I think it's either extra dimensional or they're just in places that aren't here. I uh, meaning um, I, I just think they're older versions of us. And by that, I mean, previous civilizations. Do they uh, penetrate the dome? That's, that is a burning question for me, which is, is it all is it an all or nothing thing? Do some get to come and go as they please, or are they all stuck in here with us? I yeah. I would tend to think it wouldn't be a cross-pollination scenario, meaning whoever's in here, there, I mean, this place is big enough to hold multiple civilizations. You just have to have rules, meaning you can't, if you're the previous civilizations can't interact with other groups publicly, right? You're not gonna land in the middle of, of Paris in a giant golden spaceship and start taking pictures and signing autographs because it would screw things up. You know, the whole prime directive thing. If there's it, other civilizations inside the dome, how, how can they have them with no planets to live on? Subterranean, probably. Continents that are hidden. Within the earth. Possibly, sure. Again, you don't need much of a cavern. You know, 50, 50 miles deep, you could comfortably appoint it. And then, right. you know, people just come and go. I mean, there's how many crafts have been talked about that you know coming in and out of the ocean coming in and out of mountains yeah they've seen a lot of this That's yeah true. so it's what i would do you know you you leave every civilization again whoever built this place maybe again there's a rule that you're not allowed to you know the civilization gets to develop as normal you're not supposed to mess with the with the history timeline and we've gone what five thousand mm -hmm. years unbroken give or take that seems to be our max because we're 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 running out of ideas now um and then then after that, you know, where we go, you know, who where our civilization or pieces of our civilization get to go after kind of like mm -hmm. the senior class right in 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 a high school or university, which is, well, yeah, you're graduating. You don't have to go home, but you, you can't stay here. And uh, you know, we got another class coming in. Sorry, you got to go. So it's a big unknown yeah. to uh, flat earthers. What's outside the dome? It is. I'd like to go with the happy ending which is i think it's a it's a utopia meaning if this world is 99 percent conflict right mm -hmm. you know it doesn't matter again it doesn't matter how rich how powerful how beautiful how um how talented you are there's always something to complain about it is conflict all the time right oh, even, yeah. if, even if you were a buddhist monk somewhere in the himalayas hovering three feet over the ground you're still dealing with mortality if that's the yeah. case then i think what's outside of here is 99 percent unlimited and it's cyclical and that you're going back and forth just to gain perspective that this so that's place a, that's a hope basically I, it is a hope but i believe in dualism you know the you know can't ha appreciate light without shadow pain, pain without ple pleasure hot without cold so how can you appreciate how can you truly appreciate like a nirvana a shambhala a heaven whatever it is without seeing the opposite and so I think I think this is a I don't know. Having been in the opposite, I would take exception with that. I'd say that we should have just stayed in Nirvana. But well, yeah. I, I get you. But yeah, I, I promise I, to appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, think think <laughs> about if, if I'm a big boss, of a big believer that things run on novelty. And, you know, Einstein had this wonderful quote, quotable guy. I, I don't care about his physics. I'm yeah. Quotable guy. I mean, he's got greeting cards all over the place. Right. <laughs> they just make a dime off of which is, uh, he said, imagination is more important than knowledge. And I really like that saying because I didn't get it for the longest time. And it's like, yeah, it is, you know, it, it just knowledge is stagnant, but imagination can take you into so many different places. Imagination may be physically creative. There you go. Yeah. Sure. So we don't know what's outside or what it looks like. No. But 
Yeah, um, one world at a time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can't, can't be one of, the, one of the interesting things that uh, Stephen Greer came up with, uh, quoting from uh, Werner von Braun, who talked to his associate Carol Rosen yep. before he died, yep. not not just about the uh, fake alien invasion, right. but the fact that by 1954, these craft that had been shot down, which you're saying you know you're not saying they don't exist right no I their origin. probably did shoot them down and and they reverse engineered a lot of technology from those shot down craft sure. and from the bodies and one of the things they mastered by 1954 was called gravity control mm. the ability to fly without fuel and they've been building a fleet of these fake et craft and they're the ones that have done the abductions and the cattle mutilations and things like that, all coming from government, corporate levels above the figurehead presidents. Sure. Like that. Hey, the, before I, I know, again, we're running out of time, but there's yeah. a wonderful, there's a wonderful Werner von Braun quote, which was, of course, on his headstone. You know, I, I would have thought his headstone, his headstone's very modest. It, you know, the year he was born and the year he died, same year as uh -huh. Elvis, by the way. And then just a little, little thing. It says Psalms 19.1. And that's that's all it says. And it's like I, I didn't know what Psalms like. And I looked it up and it says, and the firmament shows his handiwork. And I go, that's awfully interesting. You know, Werner that is interesting. Didn't strike me as a religious guy, but why is he talking about a dome like structure from the grave? Right. Yeah. Have you looked at what the Bible might say about the description of the uh, firmament itself? Uh no. I mean it's in Genesis, first chapter, you know, the uh, firmament, you know, separating the waters above and the waters below. And there's been a lot of speculation of exactly what that is. Yeah. Uh but again, for, it's it's all the other stuff. Again, look at testingtheglobe.com. There's some wonderful cool how many times, you know, the fix the earth is fixed, immovable, uh, you know, the, or or the story of um uh Joshua, where he asked God to hold the stars and the or the sun and the moon in the sky for an extra day so he could slay more enemies. And it's like that's pretty easy to do if it's just a firm of it. <laughs> you just that's hit, true. That's you just true. Hit pause button on the All sky. The, the waters above become a question. Yeah, yeah, that right. is a question. So. Uh, before we wrap up, mm -hmm. if you have a few more minutes, sure. Um, let's ask Doug to read the questions that came from his Facebook friends. Okay, which I think are really interesting. Doug, are you there? Can you hear us? I can. Yes. What's the first question they gave you? Okay, the first question is, this is actually from me. This is one that I noticed. And so I just wanted to get your opinion on this. Yeah. Um, I noticed when I was talking to someone on Skype video mm -hmm. who was on the other side of the world, me being in the US and this other guy was in the Philippines, um, that I could see out his window while I was talking to him and I could tell that it was daylight there. And yet it was dark outside my own windows because it was late at night. Right. So if the earth is flat, how do you explain being able to see light and dark from both sides of the world at the same time? Sure. All right. So yeah, it, that is a little detail we, we probably should have gotten into. Uh, flat earth is a big topic. So the when things get drawn up, when, when people do illustrations of the flat earth, most of the time they draw the sun to be like a thousand miles wide, because if you didn't draw it at least that wide, you wouldn't even see it in the drawing or the computer model or whatever it is. What we're saying is not only is it a snow globe, but the sun and the moon are tiny by comparison. We're talking maybe 50 miles wide, maybe a little bit bigger. And by that, it was one of my uh, questions I threw to scientists, which is I was always curious. You know, they say the moon's 2000 miles wide, but the blackout zone on, you know, when an eclipse crosses is only 70 miles wide. It's really, really small. It's like, well, that works out pretty well, considering that's pretty much what we say the, the moon is, is about that big. So if it's a really, really tiny object, really, really tiny light source. Yes, you can absolutely have time zones because the, the sun just goes off into the distance. You combine that with the thickness of the atmosphere, which people discount because we can't see it. We never ever see thickness. You know, what we're talking in is only like 99.99 transparent, but mm -hmm. it compounds with distance. We've got right. some fantastic videos. Well, that, that tiny sun, when it goes, goes off into the distance, if you keep zooming in on it, it just... <sighs> just fades away like a like a whale underwater you know it just it just fades away and it's like wow but because it's so bright you're looking it's like oh it's set no it didn't <laughs> it didn't set at all it just went away and we again because you're told so many times over the years that it's set so there you go really really what tiny is, what does that mean went away meaning uh it just 
they fake. turned it the, off. It was a circle, and then it just goes. No, it doesn't turn off. It just it's it's like a circle that went into fog, because again, it just goes off into the the, the thickness of the atmosphere, and eventually, it just can't punch through any more of, of what we're looking in here. No different than remember scuba divers at two hundred feet can't see the sun right it's gone even though it's middle of right, summer right right what we're living in is just a thin version of water anyway sorry what else you got doug so what let me ask just one more thing before yeah. we get to the next one yeah so if if flat earth assumes that the the uh plane of the earth with the dome over it is stationary yeah uh, you can't really make that statement because stationary re related to what right but mm. if you assume it's stationary yeah. And the sun and the moon as images on the firmament move. Yeah. Right. What what kind of a path would the sun take on the flat earth model? Oh, right. On, on the globe earth model, it goes around in a circle. It, know, it also goes around. It also goes around in a circle like a like a needle on a record player. Uh, there's okay. A, there's a wonderful app. Hang on one second. If I can do this left handed. One, two, two, three. Uh, one second, let me show you. So hopefully you can see this on the, come on, you piece of crap. Uh, where's my FE clock? So if you can see this on the screen, this is real time, by the way. Uh, can you see that? Uh, yeah. So that's the sun and the moon going around and actually, and that's where it is right now. It's called the Flatter Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock app. And they do really did a nice job on it. So the sun and the moon literally go around it like uh, uh, in a circle, like mobile above a child's crib. About the equator level, roughly? Uh, yeah, it depends. It depends where, because it, it moves also like- it changes with the seasons, right? Yes, it absolutely changes with the seasons. Right now, the sun is going around. It looks like it is centered somewhere over Mexico. And again, the blue, the green screen is going to completely screw this thing up. But oh, that's right now, real time. Yeah, that's right now. But huh. uh, but yeah, the sun and the moon are are it's 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 fascinating thing. But look it up wow. if you get a chance. And and the flat Earth model still allows heat and light to come from the sun, both right? Uh, some of it, yes, but not all of it. Remember, uh, people people have asked that where you know they say, well, you know, doesn't that mean it's diminishing the heat? It's like, well, think of all the other energy transfer systems we have. We have the jet stream. Which also works really, really well on on that map. We yeah, but other... I'm I'm talking about stepping into the sun from the shadow. Oh, sure. You sure. you feel the radiation yep. on your skin. You do. The sun is I consider it uh, an incandescent light bulb, and, the, and in, the... The, in the health field, you get benefits from sunlight. Sure. So does that still apply? Yep. Yep. It does. And what in that model? What I mean, I know these are long questions. That's but all right. Short version. What is the sun? Well, that's a tough one. Uh, again, just a big light bulb. Uh, is there fusion on it? If you follow Eric Dollard's model, and he's not one of ours, uh, he said, he goes, he goes, there's, he is, I don't think there's fusion at all. He goes, I think it's getting energy again, like a light bulb from somewhere else. He goes, you may see, you know, some sort of fusion in the solar flares, but even that just could be, might be visual. So don't know. Don't know what the sun is. I mean, is it even a three-dimensional object or is it a two-dimensional object just with a whole bunch of radiated light? No different than, um, for example, when you take a magnifying glass to our sunlight, right? And you pinpoint it on the ground, you can barely even look at that pinpoint. And, it gen and that pinpoint itself generates a lot of heat. And that's just one example. Uh, right. Well, so you're saying three-dimensional objects could exist in the firmament? Possibly. And then your follow-up question might be, what's suspending it up there? Well, I mean, if you have tech this big, then creating a unified field for an object that's 50 miles wide, pff, that's easy to do. Okay. So anyway, that app would be a response to Doug's question. Yeah. Yeah. Right, look look it up and get a chance. It's going to save you some time. And what's, what's the app called again? It's called the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Okay, good. You just type in Flat Earth, Sun, Moon. You'll, you'll find it. It's from uh, uh, Blue Water Bay. What's the next question? Well, I was just to add to that, I, I'm mm -hmm. definitely a proponent of the, not the gravitational system, but the electro, the electrical universe sure. system. And um, there's a really good website and, and organization called the Sapphire Project. I don't know if you've ever looked at that. I have not. 
S A F I R E Sapphire project. And that's okay. what their whole purpose is, 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 um, demonstrating that the sun, it's in fact an electrical universe and not a gravitational mm. universe. I think it's really interesting. It might fit in with what you're talking sure. about. I'll, I'll take a look. S A S A F I R E. Yeah. Project.com. Yep. Okay. Cool. Next question is when there's an eclipse, why is the shadow round? Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, because the sun technically, and again, like the fact that you use that word round, when when you're talking about a, a three three dimensional spherical object, we say sphere or ball or globe. But yeah, the the eclipse shadow is round, you know, in this case. But does that mean if you put a, a dinner plate in front of a light bulb, technically the shadow is also going to be round? So, but as far as the eclipse goes, boy, there's some, there's a, there's a wonderful, uh, video out there on my channel by, uh, the late Mike Helmick, uh, who he called me up almost immediately after the 2017 eclipse, what I, which I had a chance to watch. And he goes, he goes, Mark, there's, there's nothing eclipsing the sun. And I go, what do you mean there's nothing eclipsing? He goes, he goes, I don't think there's a three-dimensional object that's actually eclipsing the sun. It seems to be eclipsing itself. I don't didn't know what to make of that of, uh, until I th started thinking of the planetarium model, which was, of course, perfect. Because when you go to a planetarium, right, you can, you can show waxing and waning moon and all the phases of the moon on the ceiling all day long. But you never ever see the sun in the planetarium, because why would you? That takes away from, from everything. But if it was a giant planetarium, then you could just shade the sun like you normally would. But when it comes to an eclipse, yeah, you could you could shade it and make an but eclipse. The, round the only round. reason to do that yeah. would be to try to keep people believing in the round Earth, right? Yes. I mean, this place is designed and I'm not trying again, I'm not trying to say that the God is deceptive, but he has his his methods and this place is meant to be an illusion of things right you know signs and wonders and inspirations and if you know to to keep people acting normally and you you don't want to there was a there was a video i made it's like look we act really different when we know we're confined meaning you you take a wildlife preserve you put 100 buffalo in it if you know a thousand acres and there's a fence over there buffalo don't care right it's like oh i got water i got grass you put five people in that same thousand acres, they're only going to care about the fence. It's all they will care about. They will just be drawn to it. It'd be like, who made the fence? What's on the other side of the fence? Why am I in the inside? Have I angered the fence gods? Maybe we should sacrifice things to the fence. Grab some buffalo. We're going to start cooking those things up. That's uh, anyway. So the only reason to simulate the globe Earth, which is God's idea in that model, is so people don't feel confined. Yeah. Yeah, give them give them the illusion of an expanse. You know, again, kind of like a wildlife preserve. We do it for animals all the time. You make it a certain size, and animals couldn't be happier, even mm -hmm. though they are fenced in. Human beings are a little trickier. Human beings tend to figure some stuff out. So the illusion is, you say, "Oh, it's on a globe." There's and you're in space. You can go anywhere you want. You're not confined. You're just in space. You may figure it out, and you can imagine and do space stories all day long. You're not going to, it's not going to happen, but think of all the, the science fiction novels we have right revolving around space. It's brilliant. Hmm. Okay. Next question, Doug. Okay. Next question is, yeah. uh, if the earth is flat, does it have an edge or an end? I, you sort of answered this one, I think. But yeah, um, it, it's, it's, yeah, I'll give you the short version. It's, it'd be kind of like, a does lake have an end? Uh, you know, the Thor movies with Asgard in the cosmic waterfall did not help us in the slightest. Uh, you, you basically, because people are keep thinking that, okay, you're on a disc in space. And I have to follow that with who told you there was space? Right. Why? Why would we be on a snow globe in space? If you're on a snow globe, you could be anywhere. You're probably sitting on somebody's desk if you're in a snow globe. Or there could be space. Right. You don't know. There, well, there could be space, but you keep thinking about space because it's been reinforced to you your entire life. Right. You, you up in the, the sky, people it's are like, not saying it doesn't exist. They're just saying they don't know. Yeah, they don't. They don't know. But why would there have to be space? Even Carl Sagan. He started figuring some stuff out before he died. Is you know one of his famous quotes. It's like space is because it seems so inefficient because it is so empty. It is so vast. And there's nothing in it. 
you know, that's if it that's if it's empty you know just because we can't perceive what's in it doesn't mean it's empty sure of course of course i got you okay doug next question okay um how is it that in alaska there are many months of darkness in many months of mostly daytime right okay so uh kind of like the app that i was showing you if you want to do 24 hour sun i really wish you would have gone with the other question because i i do like to point out weaknesses if if i can which was if you want to do a 24 hour sun on, on a flat model that's easy you know the sun just revolves around the the center of the the record however 24 hour sun in antarctica that is the, the much, much bigger problem because you can't do a 24 hour sun in Antarctica. And I've had photographer friends. It's like pretty sure I've seen 24 hour sun in Antarctica, which means either. Well, I, I don't think they're lying. Uh, so, I mean, there's some, but at the same time, I don't think people down there are out there telling the truth necessarily, meaning there could be multiple light sources when it comes to uh, Antarctica. Something else is going on there. Uh, we don't we don't have all the answers. I mean, short honest answer i don't know but but you should have actually asked if you wanted to trip me up you should have asked antarctica alaska that's easy i wasn't trying to trip you up no no no, no. but 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 <laughs> i i you know be amazed how many interviews i've done nobody brings it's like very few people say what's the weakest point of the flat earth model it's 24 hour antarctic sun that's yeah. really the the only thing that that i just sit there and it's like eh, i don't know i mean i got some theories i don't yeah, like we, really any of them but because they would have noticed that, you know, at the wherever the South Pole station really is on the ring. Somebody would have. Yeah, somebody there would have been some whistleblowers, kind of like the, the giant magnetic Mount Maru at the center of the North Pole. Uh, you know, if if, you know, some people said, oh, it's got to be hundreds of miles high is going. Yeah, if it's hundreds of miles high, then pilots mm -hmm. will, you know, some pilots going to mention it. There's yeah. some, and it, we're not talking about whistleblowers. We're just talking about casual things that pilots talk about. It's like, dude, sure. did you see that thing? It was freaking huge. Yeah. So, but the workers at the South Pole station Somebody, would notice yeah. right away. Somebody yeah. would have said something if, if there was never 24 hour sun, somebody would have said something. In my yes. opinion, in my opinion, so, there are other people in my community swear that there's no 24 hour sun. It's like, eh. Eh, I, I'm not, I'm not quite there, but it doesn't really, doesn't really hurt us. We've got too many other points. That's like, eh. yeah, and most just, people don't even, most people don't even think about Antarctica. So, okay. What's next. All right. Uh, what are some facts you would need to see to convince you mm -hmm. that the earth is round and not flat? Okay. I, and I know you're, you're saying round because the question said round spherical. Uh, yeah. The question yes. says, yeah, spherical. We know by the way, uh, when somebody's not a flat earther, because they use the word round, we never use the word round. Um, cause the round could be your dinner plate or a hubcap or whatever. Right. So uh, right. two things, I, I, there's only two things I need. In fact, either one will work. Uh, there's a cheap version and expensive version. The expensive version would be take a GoPro pro camera, put it and uh, on the top of a rocket and you fire it off into space and you make sure this thing's going to leave orbit and you keep it pointed at the ground because eventually the globe will start forming, you know, from, mm -hmm. you know, from the ground, it's going to turn and it's never happened in the history of space travel ever. That has never, ever happened. And st statistically speaking, it should have, um, it, you know, it's always, you know, it's always, the cameras are always on the second stage or the first stage and they fall off back to earth. And it's like, okay, now there's a few shots of course, taken from objects in space, but never the transition model. Uh, the, the latest and greatest one that I, I love mentioning would be the, um, uh, the Tesla Roadster in space. You know, it's like, it's like it gets up to an up point. And it's like, oh, no, we're going to follow the rockets back down, you know, the boosters, which is because you want to land those at the ground. And we cut to car, which is already in front of this globe. It's like, I see what you did there. Very, very clever. Um, the other one, there's a cheap one. You want, you want the, um, the cheap version? You want to convince me? Tell me how the spacesuit works. And by that, I mean, loan me a spacesuit from any era because they've all worked perfectly, no matter what we've done, anything from the 19, late 1950s all the way up till now. Put me in a vacuum chamber, crank that thing up. Tell me what happens. Tell me, I put that challenge out there for years. Tell me how I don't die. And by that, I mean, it violates- It should explode, right? It should explode. It violates a law of thermodynamics, which says that pressure cannot exist to non-pressure without a barrier. And if that barrier is soft, 
like a basketball or a football, you put you go on YouTube all day long, put, you know, fill in the blank in a vacuum chamber. If it's soft, it'll just detonate. Soda can mm. detonate, right? But the spacesuit doesn't even inflate. Your, your arms move, that's, your fingers move. You can do all this. That's stuff. a great and, point. Yeah. And, and I, I put this, it's like, but it was brilliant. Whoever came up with it. I met, I hope they retired and died happy because somebody came up with the idea of when it came to our, the American moon missions, you know, cause our early suits were all plastic and metal and because the, you know, the pressure thing. Right. And then somebody said, no, 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 do soft suits. Nobody know. Nobody takes physics in high school. Mm-hmm. The physics club is really, really small. We're just going to put it on television, and it's absolutely going to work. No one will question it. Not even the nerds. It's like, and tell me what is in that backpack that that can stop the the counteract the vacuum of space. Uh, it and you know the it and even if you could, right? Even if you could tell me that now, right in twenty twenty three, tell me how we did it with analog back in nineteen sixty nine. Which let me follow up one more, which was. When I go to when I went to other countries and I would ask them, you know, I know why Americans believe that we went to the moon. That's just patriotic duty. Right. But when I go to other countries, it's like, why you people in Sweden? Why do you think the Americans went to the moon? You know what? They told me the same thing that every other person told me. It's like, well, it was on television and the American media yeah. wouldn't lie. Right. And I just stare at them like they had a bug on their face and, be like, and, and like waiting for them to catch on. It's like the Americans wouldn't lie about anything it's what we do i mean come on russia calls us the empire yeah. of lies they're not wrong anyway go ahead what else you got no that's exactly right i don't i do not believe that we've been to the moon just for good good for you reference. that's a start I, um, again, I i get it i understand why why you would fake something like that american pride blah 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 but that's and i but that's not the only reason and for me it, i when i got into this it's like oh right you have to fake the moon you have to fake the moon and make it seem like, oh, hey, it's been done. Nobody else has to do it. So good night, everybody. In 1972, they just wrote it off and then nobody, nobody went back. Nobody even tried <laughs> to go. Yeah, there's, that is pretty weird. There's five launch ready uh, countries out there in the world, organizations, and no one even tried. The Russians just stopped. Really? Cosmonauts? Remember, there was, there, it was called the space race. Right? Yeah. And then we get there and the only time in the history of sports, you know, it's like we get there and it's like, and they're like, yep, that's it. We quit. It's like, what do you mean you quit? You're not going to make a bigger base and we're not going to make a bigger base. And then the Cold War reaches the moon. That's not going to so, happen. So what happened with Sputnik? <laughs> the first okay. satellite. Do, do our, our satellites real? Sorry, I, I know we're dragging on, but are our satellites real? Yes, they are. Are they suspended by rockets most of the time? You know, are they placed up there in this this null point of gravity? No. Um, NASA is not secret information, are the biggest consumers of helium in the world. The high altitude balloon program that mm-hmm. NASA created in the 50s is brilliant. They launch so they can launch payloads of four tons. And if you can launch four tons on a balloon, which is pennies on the dollar. It's not even it's fractions of pennies on the dollar. Why would you ever put anything in a rocket? Well, the rocket is a program when you can sink money into and then sink so satellites or balloons. A lot of them. Why? Yeah. Why would you? Why would you put any anything else? If, if a balloon can carry your payload and not only that, but a lot of them are just do a fraction of what they're, they're supposed to. Most of the bandwidth, including what we're talking to on right now, that is still old school tech, which is under sea cables which started off as telegraph, then evolved to telephone, and then finally fiber optic. And they handled the, the, the bulk of the workload. Still to this day, every, every network knows this. You know, the, it, and the cable s- system is massive and it was still cheaper than trying to do it with rockets. Yes, you can do some things with, with satellites in orbit, but the bandwidth tiny by comparison. And don't think, by the way, that sat phones work everywhere because they don't. I know way too many people that have sat phones. It's like, oh yeah, in the movies they work every time. In the real world, that's a really interesting issue. Mm. Yeah, there's there's dead spots for for sat phones and GPS all over the place, and it shouldn't. Because those are specifically sold. Yes. That if you can go outside, it works. Yes. And and yes, does it? Do they have extended ranges? Sure. Can you go into the middle of a- the Amazon jungle? Only in the movies. And huh. uh, so one one more real quick. Uh, they uh, a lot of them. I, well, it was from the documentary, but a lot of things don't work in Antarctica. I think sat phones is one of them. Anyway, what else you got? 
Um, how would you describe the shape of the sun, moon, and planets? Uh, do uh, kind of like what I talked about earlier. Do they look spherical? Yes. But then again, uh, the planet on my television, does it look spherical? Yeah. Can I land on it? No. No. It's just, again, it's just uh, an image on a screen. That's all it is. A very pretty image and very inspiring image, but that's it. So spherical, gotcha. yes, but but a sphere, a short version spherical image. Gotcha. And what is the farthest you think we've traveled from Earth? You kind of answered this already. Well, if the dome is say, we'll we'll just give it a rough estimate, and it would still be pretty shallow. If this, say the top of this dome is three thousand miles, uh, if that's even it. Uh, I don't know. It might even be less than that. Look up the uh, the high altitude nuclear program from the late 50s to the early 60s between the United States and the Soviet Union. Every nuke they fired for four years was up. And I knew exactly what they were doing when, when they were doing that. It's like because that was the same time that they just got back from Antarctica. It was the same time that NASA was founded. And the same the same year that NASA was founded was also the same year the Antarctic Treaty was put into place. Right. Not a coincidence. <laughs> Right, because there's two things you want to do. Okay, we got to lock down the outer edge, and we got to militarize space. And then they just start firing nukes because they were basically using nukes as paintballs, trying to map out the sky. Because eventually, you're going to have to figure out how quickly you have to arc over, you know, with your with your rockets and go horizontal. You'd think all the rockets would go straight up. They don't. They arc over immediately, and no one really talks about it. It's like, oh, that's just the way they have to go. It's like, no, it isn't. It's like A to B. Escape velocity, go freaking straight up. Why are you going to the side? Over into the ocean and then dump them. Anyway, what else? Last one I have is uh, how can you simultaneously get sunrises, sunsets, seasons, eclipses, moon phases, planet positions, and star positions 100% correct 100% of the time on a flat Earth model? Right. <sighs> All right. When you start again, that that goes back into not necessarily the chicken and the egg analogy, but it's that's the only thing I can come up with it, which is if you start mapping stuff out, right? If you do predictive modeling starting a long time ago, and when it when it comes to the stars and the moons and the planets and everything, the modeling's not going to change. Uh, in fact, why why would it have to be different on a flat model? You know, if if it is if we're talking about a projection system and this is just in a giant ornamental clock system then nothing changes about the model. It's still a model. It still works. It, the only difference is you're not on a sphere. You know what I mean? It, it's, uh, you know, you've been working on the model a long time. And the only thing different was, let's put it this way. They were mapping out stuff. They knew where all the stars were and all the constellations and the Zodiac a long time before they came up with the globe model. And then when they came up with the globe model, it's like, okay, we're going to have to make it fit around it. And they did. But, if, it's this, if this is just an illusion of the solar system, same thing applies. I mean, the, the illusion works, and, but the illusion would be a solar system model, so sure. So you're saying the answer is it's a planetarium. It's a planetarium. And, and the same has been. And since we don't have flying cars, it works. If 99.99% of the population, again, people, people say, well, you're saying that God's lazy. You know, God could build a solar system. It's like, yeah, he could. But why would he if no one's going to figure it out? You know, it, it goes into the, the, the movie set thing, which is you, you, like the old, remember the old Western movies where, where you had the, if you saw the, you know, the, when they shoot it, you only see the front, right? There's nothing behind. Because you're not going to get to go behind the, the when you're watching the the Western, the people don't get to go into every shop, and so if the illusion is what he, what is being shown, and we don't have flying cars, and I think that's deliberate, then it works. And it's <clears throat> it's the same thing when a kid with a telescope sees the moons of Jupiter. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, well, I mean, you can. We do the we do we do Jupiter and the moons of Jupiter in really good planetariums, the modern ones. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, in fact, take a binocular to the planetarium, right? Does Jupiter look bigger? Hey, look at that. It looks great. Yeah, Can you right. land it? No, you can't. When we when you walk out of that building, who is to say that you're not in a just much, much bigger building? We're only talking about scaling up engineering stuff that you know, come on. If we we can show things to people from even a hundred years ago, and you'd probably be burned for witchcraft. I mean, show, show somebody a cell phone 
Go back in time and show somebody a cell phone a hundred years ago. How do you even mm-hmm. start to explain that to someone? Right. I think they were right. It is black magic, though, but it's another well, issue. Mm, well, I mean, it's ma- what I call science is magic without the mystery. I mean, yeah. you know, if it's repeatable, that's the one bad thing I don't I never liked about science, which is uh, if it's repeatable, it's science. Doesn't matter if they can't even explain it. There was an article I read how, just a couple of weeks ago to remind me of what we don't know, which was um, uh, if you know anyone that's into physics and like fluid dynamics, we know that a plane, you know, planes take off the ground because, you know, um, air rut goes faster over the top of the wing than, than below it and right. creates a lift, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, find a physicist and to ask them why it does that. And they'll be like, uh, it just does. And it's like, yeah, but why? Yeah. And they, they, they'll tell you, basically, what I'm getting at is they can get you close, but they can't get you all the way. It's just like, it doesn't matter. The plane gets from here to there. That's all we care about. Kind of like bumblebees. Can't well, it- that's if science were even sincere. I mean, exactly. it's, it's degenerated completely now. So exactly. science is repeating what the authorities say. Right, right, right. Yeah. Anything else, Doug? No, that was the end of the questions. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Happy to do it. Yeah. So the main way to see all of your material is the YouTube channel. Well, you know what? Just go p- pick your favorite thing, whatever it is, BitChute, Brideon, uh, Rumble, YouTube, mm-hmm. or just search uh-huh. engine and type in Flat Earth Mark. That's it. You'll okay. Find that was my, great. All my info is there and I doxed myself. So, you know, all my, all my contact info is still out there. Yeah. Incredible. That's how it should be. Yeah. Thank you. And hopefully everybody will see this and get a lot more exposure. Cool. Thank you. We'll send you this uh, links as soon as we have them. Cool. Should be up on Sunday. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Maggie.